These are some older lobster traps right here. For DJ King, a walk down his dock in Branford is a walk down memory lane. And I started with 10 traps, 10 wooden traps. We just, I was in a small boat, we pulled them by hand, and we caught, you know, just a few lobsters every day. What started as just a hobby quickly turned into a lifestyle. We did very well with the lobsters back then. It was uh, very lucrative, maybe 600 a day. 60 and 70 lobsters for a 10 pot trawl. You know, they, the guys couldn't even band them fast enough. That's how many there were. But one day, the traps came up empty. It never really rebounded from that 98, 99 year where we were catching, in, you know, hundreds and hundreds of lobsters daily. Then all of a sudden, we would pull our pots up and they'd be completely empty or the lobsters would be dead. Fast forward 25 years. The under over was two lobsters and we went, I think, uh, two and a half. And I think we, we went under that number today. There are currently zero full time lobstermen in the sound and only a handful who are part time. We just decided it just wasn't worth it. Took, took everything out. The Department of Energy and Environmental Protection says the combination of a hurricane, pesticide runoff, parasites and rising water temperatures in 1999 suddenly made the Long Island Sound hostile for lobsters. The peak of the fishery occurred in the late 90s and in Connecticut we had 3.7 million pounds of lobster landed with a value of about 12 million dollars and at that time we had 400 people reporting landing lobster in the state. Um, I took a look at the landings over the last seven years and we've averaged about 130,000 pounds at a value of about $800,000 and um, about 50 people reporting landing lobster. The lobstering industry in Connecticut trickled to a stop, forcing fishermen like King to diversify or get out of the water. When the lobster started to drop off, we did oystering, we did clamming, so I ran a, uh, a tugboat. We did very well with the conch. The prices were great. King says he's one of the lucky ones. Other types of fishing prevented him from financially sinking. Many of his colleagues weren't so fortunate, forced to find a new career. Now these docks right here are actually upweller docks. Today, King is on his boat every morning, but the only signs of his lobstering days are old t-shirts and garage wall stories. That was so big, it, didn't, it couldn't even go into the trap. While the lobster industry may have died off here in Connecticut, the same can't be said for the lobster capital of the world, sitting 250 miles up shore. Up here off the coast of Maine, you can see that the lobster industry, the fishing industry, is doing pretty well. They don't have an issue pulling them in. But down in Connecticut, the opposite problem. You go out in the Long Island Sound, you're not going to see a lot that look like this. Meet Steve and Danny Train. Nice lobster. Brothers, lobstering in Maine's waters for decades. Another hard shell. Row out to the boat, steam to town, grab him, grab bait, we come start hauling. We try to haul a shy 300 or so every day, and if we're done at noon, we're done at noon. If we're done at 2, we're done at 2. Pulling in hundreds of lobsters daily in peak season. I don't know about you, Dan, but I think we're having lobster for dinner. <laughs> The climate and other factors Connecticut is facing are not a problem up here. That's too small. But they are issues that are closely monitored. So we know that there is going to be a fishery in the future. I'm blessed to fish in the Gulf of Maine. Uh, there's going to be cycles where the fishery turns down and turns up, but it's never severe. We have pretty good management practices. He says experts often test the Gulf waters and watch environmental trends to ensure Mainers don't one day have to give up the life they love. When you have a collapse like they had in Long Island Sound, believe me, we feel for them. I do anyway, because I know what it's like to do this for a living and to not be able to do it anymore. Has, it, it just feels like part of your life has ended, I'm sure. I, I couldn't imagine not being able to do this. They tell us their love for the industry. It's almost addictive. Is what makes the uncertainty of lobstering worth it in the end. I make a living. Some years I make a really good living. Some years I wished I'd chosen something else because I'm trying to pay bills. But it's it's not just a job. You know, it's it's part of who we are. It's it's a cultural thing. If you grow up in a lobstering community, and it becomes uh, a big part of your life. A testament all lobstermen have present and past. You know, we had some hard years. It was, you know, hard on the family, hard on relationships. And um, I think that fishermen and lobstermen will tell you that there's like this almost lure to the sea, you know. Brooke Griffin, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station.